Alrighty guys, check it out. So I wasn't going to make another video today, but I had to. I freaking had to. I looked at the futures, which mind you, earlier in the day, the futures were red. I looked at the futures and all of a sudden they were va not vastly in the green, but they were up a decent amount and they're still up a decent amount. And I looked at crypto, which was up a lot earlier and it's up even more right now. So I figured, let me hop on here. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I just got out of the pool. I might've had a little bit uh, to drink as well. So bear with me. Hence why I'm wearing this hat. I got a friggin' weird looking tan. Actually, not really. My tan is uh, looking decent. But anyway, enough of that. We got to break down a lot in this video. Well, not too much, but we're going to talk a little bit about the futures, crypto. We're going to break down some stocks, maybe, uh, maybe some energy stocks. We're going to look at some big tech as well. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your coffee. Again, happy 4th of July, guys. Make sure to get your 10 stocks from Moomoo with a $100 deposit link down below and get yourself six stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited literally free money guys and with that being said again cheers happy fourth of july and yes i am sipping a coffee because you guys know how that goes you're outside for a couple of hours in the sun yeah you drink a little bit you eat a little bit you get tired you got to drink some coffee. So let's talk about what's going on. Again, it's currently, uh, maybe I didn't mention it, but it's currently about 8 p.m. on the East Coast. We have the S&P futures up half a percent. We have the NASDAQ up three quarters of a percent. Dow futures are up point, what is it, 0.3 percent. As we have the S&P, um, wait, did I forget? Whichever one I forgot to mention. You know, again, I might have had a little bit to drink today, guys. So uh, S&P half a percent. Either way, <clears throat> and you can see I'm losing my voice as well. Either way, we are up a decent amount. Pretty nice in the futures with the NASDAQ leading the way. Now the NASDAQ is pushing up uh, about 0.8%. So we're moving up um, and clearly gapping out of where we were earlier in the day. If you guys recall in my video earlier today, the futures were down a bit. We're obviously breaking out of uh, you know those highs. And we can see here on the five-day, five-minute, the S&P futures are trading at fresh highs. Same with the NASDAQ futures, I'm assuming. Let's pull those up. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, actually, not necessarily at fresh highs, but NASDAQ futures are taking out the highs from the past, uh, you know, couple of days here, and we're pretty much at the resistance from the end of June at about 11,750, 11,700. So these futures are looking pretty decent right now. I'm not going to lie, guys, but overall, we know that we are still in a downtrend in the grand scheme of things. But this is a good sign because, well, a good sign for the bulls because if I pull up SPY, and you guys saw this when I um, talked about it, right? Recently, I talked about it this morning, Friday, you know, I've been saying this a lot lately. We are seeing, obviously, some uh, profit taking here from when SPY went to 392 down to about 372 in just about a day or two, guys. And that was from the end of June to just a couple of days ago. We saw the profit taking, but we're also getting buyers coming in because we're noticing clear support on the 20-day chart here on SPY at about... 375 and triple Q's holding right around 275. So now that we're getting that pop in the futures, and it doesn't mean that it's going to hold overnight. I mean, it might. And let's say it does hold overnight. If we go green tomorrow, there could be a potential breakout in store. And I'm telling you, if triple Q takes 385 out or 285 rather, which is why I have my alert there, there's going to be a pop. And if SPY ends up taking out, let's say something like 385, 383, hence why my alert is right there. That is where this could be making a move. And we have a lot coming up this week and in the next couple of weeks. We have the jobs report this Friday, which according to the Dow Jones estimates, job growth likely slowed down in June with 250,000 non-farm payrolls added down from the 390,000 added in May. And economists surveyed expect the unemployment rate to hold at about 3.6%. Not too bad. Then later in July on, I think the 13th, yeah, 13th of July at 8.30 a.m. on the East Coast, guess what we have, guys? June 2022 CPI data. It's like this stuff never stops. And mind you, we have the minutes coming up this week on Wednesday. So just when you thought there's nothing coming up, maybe we might be smooth sailing a little bit. We have the CPI data. Then we have the minutes. Then we have Q4 
Q2 GDP. Then we have this, that, the third, and it's just never ending. So if you think the volatility is going to slow down, if you think we're ever going to have a smooth sailing stock market, I mean, we might for some periods of time, for a couple weeks here, a couple months there. Uh, but if you think volatility will ever come to a halt, you're out of your mind because there's always the next thing coming up. You guys got to realize that. So with that being said, let's dive over to crypto. Make sure to smash that like button if you guys are finding value in this video. I appreciate you as always for tuning in. This is moving in a big way. Bitcoin is now at $20,165 roughly. And earlier, just about, and by earlier, I mean literally um, just about, 20 30 minutes ago BTC was at 20,300. So we're talking about a move from just yesterday on the 3rd of July at about 1 a.m. on the East Coast, right? Uh literally at 1 a.m. This was at 18750. It went all the way to 2300, 20,300 just 30 minutes ago. So we're talking in just about a day and a half, almost 2 days, <clears throat> Bitcoin has made up a lot of ground. And you can see it's now over that 20,000 level, which psychologically, that's a big, uh, big critical spot for BTC. So it's looking good right now for the bulls, for sure. But do not be surprised if we do get some selling pressure coming in uh, pretty shortly here because we didn't. Well, first of all, we didn't take that 17.5 low out yet, but we also have not broken out of the uh, you know resistance from just a couple of days ago, about a week ago, <clears throat> which was right around 21.5. So we're kind of in this sideways trading range right now on BTC and pretty much for Ethereum as well. We'll take a look at that in a second. So we have to pick direction. You know, are we going to get a run past 21,500, which would be good for the bulls, or are we going to crack back under 18.5, 18, then 17.5, which would obviously be good for the bears. And uh, if I pull up Ethereum here, let's see what's going on on Ethereum right now. Yeah, same thing. It's seeing a bit of a rally. Okay, it's at 11.50, solid, but it is still under 12, 12.50, which was resistance from the end of June, and it's holding above 900, 950, 1,000. So it's in this trading range of about two, 250 bucks. And what direction are we going to pick? I mean, you know, flip a coin, guys. Grab a coin right now, flip it, and then make your make your decision like that at this point. Uh, I mean, look, if we take 1,300 out, expect more upside. That'd be great for the bulls, technically speaking. But the second, and I mean the second, we break under 1,000, which... Look at how we held a thousand four or five days ago on the thirtieth of June. We literally kissed a thousand, and then we ran off of it. Right? If we fall under a thousand, guys, watch out below on Ethereum. That is all I'm saying. That'd be a great W for the Bears if they were able to get this under a um, thousand. So, with that being said, let me pull back on uh, pull up Thinker Swim again. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Uh, bear with me. I'm not going to be editing this video. That stuff takes too long sometimes. We're going to zip right through it. We're about, what, eight minutes in? We're good on time. So, again, jobs report this Friday, CPI data the 13th. The minutes are this Wednesday. There's a lot of crap coming up. And let's pull up oil before we end up ending off this video. We'll talk a little bit, a bit, a little bit about, I'm going to mix up my words here, guys, a little bit about big tech as well. Um, so let's take a look. Crude oil right now is up 2%. The futures are doing pretty well. It's chilling at about $110 a barrel. And look at this, guys. This ended up putting in a higher low, or rather a um, yeah, higher low at about 105 last week, it looks like. You guys can see that right here. Boom. And a couple of days before that, they put in uh, another higher low at about 102, 103. And now we're starting to make a, again, 2% move in the futures. We're starting to push to the upside. That's great. So if we, and for this week, shortened week, guys, we're going to be watching, uh, I'm going to be watching big resistance coming up at about 113. That was the high from the end of June. If we take that point out and then break 115, that is where we're going to start gaining a ton of steam on crude oil. And I know I've been saying that a lot lately. 
but I believe it's going to happen at some point here. And July 4th, this is going to be big. I think um, we'll see if Jerome Powell talks about July 4th at all, you know, in terms of, um, you know, energy consumption. <clears throat> A lot of people travel July 4th. Um, you know, we'll see if that affected the price of oil in a couple of days. We all know it. it's, it's a bit delayed, but we'll see, um, you know, if that affects the price of crude oil. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. And again, if we get that buying pressure, 113.15 plus, there's going to be a breakout coming in my personal opinion. So for that reason, you guys know me, I'm watching these energy stocks. I'm watching ConocoPhillips, sticker symbol COP. We have clear support at about, where is this? 88, 90 bucks. That's held pretty much every time we've uh, pulled back to it, which at this point, it's been about five, six times since the end of April. So that's a very good sign uh, that we've held it. But let's be honest, guys, we're not breaking out quite yet. We are holding it as support, but we aren't confirming the pop quite yet, which is kind of what I'm waiting for um, this week. I think this week we will get more direction in these energy stocks. So if COP starts moving above, I'd say 93, 95-ish, that general range. I'll set my alert right now. Mark is that we're above 93. If that breaks, watch out for a break towards $100 plus. But if we do break under 90, under 88, that's not going to be too good for the uh, for for the bulls. I'm going to be honest with you guys. So keep your eyes out on that uh, you know support as well because we might make a move to the downside. It's not out of the cards. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely in the cards. So XOM is another one, Exxon Mobil, that I'm watching this week. This one's been making higher lows like a lot of these energy stocks have. But ever since the beginning of June, about a month at this point, it's been making lower highs as well, 105 92 91 Now we're at about $88. So if we do make another lower high, this is where we're going to get rejected, probably around 88 to about 90 bucks. But if we get buyers out of 90 to about 92 on Exxon Mobil, it starts taking out these uh, these moving averages on the four hour chart. There's there's going to be a breakout. I'm telling you guys, I think there will be a breakout at that point. But we're just not quite there yet. We are not quite there yet. We have not gotten that confirmation. So for that reason, we got to sit back, chill, set on alert, and watch what direction. <clears throat> it ends up picking. So that's Exxon. I'm going to keep my alert, or rather just set my alert because I don't have one right now. I'll put one. Mark is at or above 90 bucks a share. And before we end off this video, actually, wait a second. One more energy stock. Occidental Petroleum, 2.7% Green Day Friday. My alert's at 63.50. Watch for that break out of the wedge. This kind of looks very similar to Exxon Mobil. So watch out what direction we end up picking. And before we end off this video, make sure to smash that like button if you guys are still here and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to get those free stocks and join my Patreon link down below. All that stuff helps out the channel, guys. Let's take a look at big tech and some key spots that we have to watch out for on some of these stocks. So Apple's right at a critical spot right now, ticker symbol AAPL. We are right at $140 a share coming off of a 1.6% green day on Friday, I think if Apple this week starts showing upside into the 140s, I'm going to set my alert at 142 right now. There could be a push towards potentially here, especially if these markets continue the um, you know the green we're seeing in the futures right now. There could be a push towards the top of this channel. Don't think that is too far fetched, guys. You know, and, and by the top of the channel, you guys can see here on this uh, <clears throat> four hour chart, especially if I extend this to the right, you guys can see that could be anywhere from 150, 55, maybe even higher. You know, I'm not banking on it going to 160. I mean that's a little bit unrealistic probably in the short term. But from 140 to 147.50, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, that <clears throat> is definitely in the cards for Apple, guys. Another one I'm watching here, very, very um, closely this week, is one that I'm actively buying as well, is Meta Platforms. You guys can see this one is at 160 bucks right now. It just hit 153 in the end of June. If this takes out 160, which is very possible based on this chart, and it starts going towards that low, 153. It takes that low out. 
goes into the 140s. I mentioned this before. I'll say it again, guys. That is where I will be buying more meta platforms. No doubt about it. No doubt in my mind. Microsoft is one that's also fighting to make higher lows. It has been over the past couple of weeks, but we're still making lower highs as well. You can see that clearly here on the four-hour chart as I zoom in. So let's say Microsoft starts moving above I'll put my alert 261. If this starts breaking that point, all right, we might get more upside from there on that breakout. What other big tech stocks do we have? Amazon. Amazon's at a critical spot, I'd say. Um, you know, it looks like it's fighting to make higher lows. A lot of these guys, they've been rallying a little bit past couple of weeks um, overall since the middle of June, but in the past week week or so I'd say they've gotten destroyed as the overall markets took a bit of a beating you guys remember that two three day stretch um, so let's see if they uh, they rebound that's pretty much what I'm looking at here they're all uh, they're all you could say in wedges on this 20 day chart on the 20 day time frames you can see here Amazon you can see Meta's kind of and eh, not really in a wedge ignore Meta Apple probably is I'd say yeah so that is kind of what I'm looking at guys I don't want to be in here too long but overall currently futures are up and now we have the Nasdaq up almost 0.85% as the Dow futures are up 0.4% S&P's up 0.6% Russell's up 0.4% so this looks very good by the looks of it. Let's see if it continues. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Join my Patreon. Link down below or go to stocksurfest.com slash Patreon if you want to try it out. And do not forget to get your 10 stocks for Moomoo. Each up to th uh, 25 yeah, 2500 bucks with a $100 deposit. And you can get 6 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. All of that is linked down below. And with that being said, cheers guys. I will see you in the next video. I'm probably going to go uh, back to the pool. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. And again, happy 4th of July, guys. Independence Day. See you tomorrow.